Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue, and on today's show, we'll take a look back at the recently completed 118th edition of the Golf Association of Philadelphia BMW Philadelphia Amateur Championship. Also, we'll take a look at the PGA's HOPE Project for American Veterans, and we'll have our teed off panel. That's next here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at MontcoGolf.com. Buy the first tee of Philadelphia. The first tee helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit TheFirstTeePhiladelphia.org. Buy the Golf Association of Philadelphia. Gap. Celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life. And by Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. By the Haverford Trust Company, quality is in our DNA. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professional. As long as there is fear, as long as there is curiosity, as long as there are undiscovered corners of the earth, and as long as there is willingness and desire, then you are capable of more. The BMW Championship is coming to Philadelphia September 2018. The top 70 PGA Tour players will be there. Will you? Everyone is looking for something. Consistency. Quality. Peace of mind. Found. The Haverford Trust Company. Welcome back to Inside Golf, as it's time to take a look back at the recently completed 118th edition of the Golf Association of Philadelphia, Philadelphia Amateur Championship. It was quite a finish. I don't want to give too much away, but let's put it this way. They went overtime at White Marsh Valley Country Club in the championship round. Here's Marty Emino with a recap. Thank you, Harry. 133 players teed it up right here at White Marsh Valley Country Club, hoping to write their name in association lore as the 118th BMW Philadelphia Amateur Champion. Andrew Mason of Huntington Valley and Jeremy Wall of Manasquan River survived a grueling week to reach the title match. They had to advance from stroke play qualifying and win four other matches just to reach the 36 hole final. And what a crazy final it was. Wall, 22, of Brielle, New Jersey, began the second 18 holes already four up and in firm control. However, as the afternoon round commenced, Mason started to tear the wall down. The 29-year-old from Conchahawken, Pennsylvania, won five of the first six holes to draw all square. I don't know what it was. Like, when I was staying on the first tee uh, for the afternoon round, I just, like, it, I just didn't feel the same way that I did in the morning. Like the, the first tee this morning, I was like, all right, let's go get it. Um, let's try to win some holes. And, and with, with birdies, I, I, don't, I didn't want to you know, win with Andrew playing bad golf. I wanted to win with good golf. And uh, yeah, it was, almost, it was almost like a complacency. Um, almost like, oh, this is yours. You know, just, just go hit the ball and you'll win. And kind of type of a deal, which is the worst attitude you could have. Here on the match's 20th hole, number two, Mason knocked the gap wedge to six feet and drained the birdie. Wall hit the flag stick with his approach from 135 yards, but missed the four footer to have the hole. His lead was cut in half to two up. Oh. Wall temporarily halted Mason's rally by responding with this 20 foot birdie up the hill on number three to go back to three up. But Mason showed no quit. He won holes number 30 and 31 numbers four and five respectively, the first with a bogey and the second with a birdie. Wall opened the door on number four 
when his tee shot found the right hazard. On number five, Mason jarred this for the win. Mason four, Mr. Wall five, Mr. Wall is one up. When Mason spun his approach back toward the cup on number six and made par, the match was now all square. Needing to stem the Mason tide, Wall did. He won holes seven, eight, and 10 respectively, the 25th, 26th, and 28th holes of the match. He made two nice pars on seven and eight when Mason found trouble on both holes. On number 10, Wall came up just short of the green with his second shot, but putted up to a few feet away and made par. Wall stood on the 11th tee, the 28th of the match, once again in command at three up. Mason, who was reinstated as an amateur in June 2016 after a brief professional career, once again refused to go away. He took numbers 11, 12, and 13 to square the match once more. He made birdie on 11, par on 12, and converted this seven footer on number 13 to tie the match again. Wall won number 15, the 33rd hole of the match, when he launched a nine iron from 147 yards to six feet. Mason, Mason conceded him five. the birdie. Wall, I was just up. ecstatic that Neff hit my putt. The fact that he ended up missing his par putt and I could just pick mine up and take my birdie, I was thrilled because at that point, like, I'm, I'm so nervous, I don't know if I would have made it. Two holes later, Mason pulled even once more. He knocked a seven iron onto the par five, 486 yards 17th, the 35th hole of the match, and two putted for birdie. Wall found trouble off the tee and could only manage par. On the 36th hole, number 18, and with the match all square, both players were greenside in two. Mason just off to the right, Wall 50 feet above the cup. The two exited with a pair of bogeys. So into extras, they went. The first need for added holes in an amateur final since 2000. On the 37th hole, number one, a par four measuring 349 yards. Mason had the honors and found the right fairway bunker. Then he found the right green side bunker. Wall then knocked a 50 degree wedge onto the green some 20 feet away and two putted for par. Mason splashed out of the greenside bunker to about four feet and missed his par for the half. Jeremy Wall is your 118th BMW Philly Amateur Champion. I felt lucky that I was there. I should have, either I should have two putted 18 or he should have. And um, I got pretty lucky that he didn't make that putt, to be honest with you. But like in that bunker, I chunked two of those today, you know, 80 yard bunker shots. So I, I wasn't feeling great walking into that shot. I think he was going to hit driver if I didn't hit it in the bunker, to be honest with you. You know, to win to win five matches, and especially against Andrew. Andrew, um, you know, he's he's a hell of a player, and and a 36 hole match it's it's a it's a marathon, and you gotta just really grind it out. And it's so easy throughout the day, and you know, I'm guilty of it for sure. Just kind of letting your your mind get in front of it, you know, in front of you, and and. Uh, Start thinking about like what you're gonna say in like a speech or something. Um, you know, it's a it's a big win. Um, hopefully, I'm more or less you know excited to take it you know into the rest of the summer with like the the Met stuff and the you know Gap Open and uh, the New, Jer New Jersey State stuff. So it's it's really exciting. You know, I'm glad um, I'm glad my game is is uh, is kind of rounding in the form. It was a fantastic finish to an exciting week right here at White Marsh Valley Country Club. Next year's amateur visits Stonewall. For the Golf Association of Philadelphia, I'm Marty Emino. Thanks, Marty, and congratulations to Jeremy Wall. You know, Jeremy, young guy, he can do it. He carried his bag the entire week during that Gap BMW Amateur Championship. Not a bad load when you walk away with the trophy. Good job for Jeremy Wall. All right, stay with us. More to come here on Inside Golf, including a look at what the local section of the PGA of America is doing for PGA Hope. That's next, right here on Inside Golf.
When I got back from the Gulf War, I was afraid to leave my house for five years. Clearview Hope and Renee Powell saved my life. When I started Clearview Hope, I wanted to do all that I could to help our nation's women military veterans. Renee, with Gulf, you have empowered all of us, and we just cannot thank you enough. The best stories end in thanks. Share your story at thankspgapro.com. Welcome back. Inside Golf continues. Leela Mackey of the Philadelphia section of the PGA of America takes us to Ben Salem Country Club and a look at what the local section is doing for PGA Hope. We're here at Ben Salem Country Club for the PGA Hope program. The clinic tonight has over 40 veterans participating. Now you're just coming back to the game, right? Yeah. Okay, so be patient with it. Okay. The PGA Hope program, which stands for Helping Our Patriots Everywhere, provides free golf instruction from local PGA professionals for any military veteran. The program runs for four to six weeks and includes weekly instructional clinics followed by an on-course graduation event. The clinics are designed to assist veterans who would like to learn the game for the first time, improve their golf skills, or just spend time with friends. The HOPE program, I did attend that this past uh, May and June. It was fantastic. They bring out some professionals that help perfect your swing and gave us some good tips and pointers, but we do. We need to get more veterans off the couch, get some golf clubs in their hands, and, and let them get out and enjoy a game of golf and, and really uh, see how enjoyable of a game it really is. I've always said it's the best therapy in the world, and you get to see a great group of guys you know, a few times throughout the year and play a game together and, and uh, inspire and motivate one another. It's been proven that the lifetime sport of golf is an excellent outlet for activity and competition, but also allows veterans the opportunity to reconnect with their communities. It's probably more about the six inches between your ears than it really is the, uh, the physical capabilities of being out there and, uh, and playing the game. But they, uh, that's, to me, that's inspiring. When somebody picks up the game brand new and they keep on playing it and they love it and, and uh, they enjoy it. Because, you know, for us military people, it's all about the mission, right? Mission oriented. Um, to me, you know, there's, there's nothing more challenging than the mission of trying to hit that little white ball several hundred yards down the fairway and get into that little cup at the end in the least amount of strokes possible. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The clinics are led by local PGA professionals who volunteer their time. So far, the program has attracted over 60 veterans and is expected to grow from here. This PGA of America provides veteran and active duty military veterans six to eight weeks of free golf lessons in a group setting. Currently, we have 62 programs actively going across the United States. Go on to the PGA Reach website. You'll have a military section. Contact that, and then we become email buddies. And I get a lot of them, and I'll link you up with a program. The Philadelphia PGA HOPE program has two chapters, one here at Ben Salem Township Country Club in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, and the other one at Burlington Country Club in Mount Holly, New Jersey. To learn more about the program or to get involved, go to phillypga.com slash foundation. Thanks, Leela. Another look at what golf and the PGA of America and the local section here in Philadelphia is doing for our prized American veterans. All right, stay with us. More to come. We're going to be teeing it up on Teed Off. Walk out there just to see that. It don't even play golf. Welcome back Inside Golf Now continues with our teed off panel and we are at the beautiful Bluestone Country Club in Bluebell, Pennsylvania where they still have their incentive membership program underway. How to get in touch and get more information go to their website bluestonecc.com. Joining us today longtime Philadelphia PGA professional and author Mr. Bob Shepard. Thank you Harry. Good to see you again Shep. Good to be here. Joe Logan he's just part and parcel of everything we do here when it comes to teed off. MyPhillyGolf.com. It tells you everything, the ins and the outs, maybe some of the hot rumors out there about Philly Golf and beyond from Joe Logan's MyPhillyGolf.com. And the head professional here at Bluestone Country Club is Chris Gardner. Thank you for having uh, me. By the way, uh, these two guys both went to college in South Carolina, not at the university. One of them did. I did. Joe Logan. And this gentleman, even though he's wearing blue, should be wearing orange. He's a Clemson Tiger. How about that? 
Yeah. He went to the and you're other, sitting together. Yeah, he went, I, I he, appreciate he, he that. He went to the other school. Yeah. The other school. The other school. Yeah. All right. Well, it's the University of South Carolina. Okay, two <laughs> iconic schools, uh, one in the ACC now, and one in the SEC. But that's okay, right? They still play every year, right? We'll, get, we'll try to get along today. I hope so. Let's talk about uh, speaking of iconic. Uh, what makes for an iconic golf hole? Is it the design, or who designed it? or maybe a shot and who hit it, Bob? What makes for an iconic golf hole, do you think? Well, real quick, 17 at Pebble. Uh, you got Watson chipping in, you got Nicholas hitting the one iron, almost making an ace. When you go to Pebble Beach, you want to go to 17, see what's going to on. To see what they did. Not necessarily yeah. just to look at the design. No, but all, and also the nature put most of that point together. So. There was, a, there was obviously a lot of work involved, architecture, but that hole alone is enough reason to go to Pebble. It really is. Just those two and shots. You, were out, you worked out there, so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. There's people, honeymooners, that walk out there just to see that, that don't even play golf. Is that probably one of the more photographed holes at I Pebble Beach? Seven and 17, certainly. 17. Uh, both par threes looking out on the ocean. Right. Uh, seven mm -hmm. being the short, short par three and 17. More so than 18 even. Because everybody sees, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone knows the finishing stretch there. Sure. 17, 18 at Pebble, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you can't go wrong on either of those two holes. Absolutely. How about it, Joe? Is it design or history? Well, uh, design makes for history. Uh, iconic design. I mean, you look at, well, 17 at Sawgrass. I mean, what a, a famous hole has produced many famous moments <laughs> in golf. Some good, some bad. Uh, the 18th at Marion. There is no more famous picture in golf than Ben Hogan hitting a, you know, that shot into the 18th in 1950. Uh, locally, the Cricket Club's 18th hole is well known, is respected. Uh, what else? The 11th at, at uh, Marion for the uh, sure. where uh, uh, Bobby Jones finished the Grand Slam. I, there's a, also a plaque there on the tee uh, yeah, commemorating right. that and, and memorializing what, what Jones did. So uh, it's pretty much, once again, what's happened at those specific holes, you think, that really put a course in a certain category. The hi yeah, the history. I mean, design certainly matters, but great design tends to produce history uh, in a lot of cases uh, and the players who were involved I mean uh, the famous players I mean Watson sure it's about as famous as it gets um, yeah. but and a lot of the design work on these courses too were they were put together with horse and buggies you know back in the old days these new guys come in with these high-powered machines and they have everything contoured and computerized which is wonderful but at the same time you can't beat the old designs we just went over Shinnecock. I mean, that's old fashioned, and that's that's what people want. Aaron Hills didn't get it, such an applause. They didn't get the accolades they thought they would because it's all modern. You know, it's a, it's a, the moonscape, and people don't want that. Now. <laughs> you can call it what you want at Shinnecock, but it's not a moonscape. It's might be wide open, but it's not. So, but the the, the history of these iconic holes is it's what holds them up. Let's let's talk about iconic holes, um, not just locally. Let's start off nationally. Now you mentioned already a couple, you know, at Pebble, at, at Sawgrass. How about Chris? Your experience? How you've been all over the place, down in the south, out west. You're here in the Philadelphia area at Bluestone uh, as as a head professional. If you had three or four holes to say, wow those holes really mean something well, in terms of golf history. So I've, I've been able to play some really nice um, clubs across the country, as you said, and for me, uh, watching that on TV, whether it was live or memories of, um, my recent experience I've had was at Baltusrol, and I, I would have a hard time believing that any guest that's played Baltusrol hasn't gone up there and tapped Jack Nicholas's plaque in the middle of the fairway where he hit one iron. And of course, Mickelson did that, I believe, before he hit his second mm -hmm. shot in the 05 PGA. So of course, what did I do? I go out there and I tap, <laughs> tap the plaque for good, good luck, right? And I, I didn't have as good a luck as, as Phil did. But, you didn't uh, have a one iron either. <laughs> I did not have a one iron. Um, and then I would say another famous one, I had the opportunity to work at Medina Country Club, which has hosted a couple PGAs and recently a Ryder Cup. And who hasn't seen the, the footage or pictures of Sergio running down the 16th fairway? Um, and and, and that, that hole, although very good, became iconic because of what he did there. I think that yeah. tree, I understand, has been removed. I did hear that, yeah. yeah. I think it's been removed since I worked there. But um, 
it, it, it's just another tree on, on the right side of the rough, and it became very famous when he closes his eyes, hits it onto the green and two putts, and had he won that tournament, it might be the one of the most famous shots we've ever seen. Sure. So, so when you worked there, were a lot of people taking time out to hit an extra ball from the tree? Everyone else and Jeez. me, and me included. You yeah. included? Of course I was, right? Not afraid of breaking your wrist or anything? Uh, uh, I probably pulled it away from the tree root a little bit further than he did, but um, but yeah, I mean, that's what have, it comes They didn't have a, a marker there, did they, indicating no, this is the they tree? No, not, but I think everyone kind of figured out where it was, and the caddies definitely uh, set, set you up for that one so that, that you can at least take a picture of that's it. That's good stuff. Yeah. How about it? Uh, you don't get any more iconic than 12 and 13 at Augusta. You, know, you talk about design, both design and history, those two halls. But the one that comes to mind to me that really, really gives me chill bumps is the 18th at the old course, coming up on the 72nd hole, you know, with the winter coming up and the <laughs> valley of death. That, you know, to go there and watch that is one of the ultimate experiences in, in golf. Uh, so those three would come would be my favorite thing. Shep, you've been over the, beyond the pond to play a lot. I know Troon was like your second home, yeah, right? Yeah, Troon's special. And seven, when, when you got Gene Sarazen made the hole in one and all that. But the one over there that a lot of people talk about is Turnberry, the 18th, when Nicholas was in the bushes and he chopped it out onto the green and ended up making the putt and all that nonsense. But people still today walk over and throw pennies into that divot believe it or not. It sounds stupid, but you'll actually see people walk off the fairway into the rough where he was, and they have a little plaque there. They do. And they load it up with coins every day. I don't know who gets them at the county. Where was Seve shot from the parking lot? Was that the term? That was at the Litham, I believe. Litham? Litham, Royal Litham. Yeah, Royal Litham. I wonder if Anne's. they don't have cars there anymore, so I guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about in, in just in Philadelphia? Uh, give me one hole that you you would say, boy, that to me is the most iconic hole in Philadelphia. Well, the, the, the one that would get me is like 17 at Marion. I don't know how you get a better par three than that. Now, that's a little greedy because I'm long. Most people can't even get on there, so I'm being a little facetious. But I think all good iconic holes should be short. I really do in my heart of hearts. I think like 17 at Pebble, get up front and enjoy it. You know, the, the shorter the hole, the better. Even all the way up into the Poconos with that 77-yard hole at Pocono Manor. That's fun. So Art Wall had like yeah, uh, 300, hole in ones 300 holes in one. Yeah. And who cares if he did or didn't? It's just wonderful, you know? <laughs> and when you get there, you say, oh, this is it, you know? And exactly. You don't get that at a lot of courses. Joe, so. you got a, a, a Philly iconic hole? Um, well, the ones at Marion right. that I mentioned, uh, and the 18th at Cricket, which is a great, great finishing hole. Um, how about here at Bluestone, even? Uh, what well, would be uh, an iconic hole for those who experience have the pleasure of playing it? We were able to, to showcase our golf course last June, uh, of course, out here. And I, I, I spent a lot of time talking about the 17th, which is right behind us back right. here, actually. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a risk reward right par there. five, right? Yeah. It's downhill, it's reachable in two, but also a lot of sevens to be made. Uh, I think uh -huh. that uh, that's got, goes hand in hand. If you're going to have a shorter par three, a short par five makes for a great hole sure. because it brings all numbers into play. And uh, that's that's what we do here. And I'd, I'd say another another hole that I was thinking of as well is Lanark's 18th, uh, with the yeah, the, the, little hole. the uh, little hole. back porch is sitting right there off the back of the fringe, basically. So you're thinking twice about that wedge shot coming in. And and the green's about as big as this table. It's a tiny green. You got a tree on the right. You got rough. You got a creek. It's it's everything there, and and it's reachable with a driver. But it's like I said, a lot Which of sixes. What do you to want? Do you want the first at Marion, or do you want the 18th at Lanark? Make it, I mean, you think you've got gray hair now. You won't have any hair. You get done playing those two holes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well for down. those of you who have uh, gray hair, that's great because <laughs> Shep and I were in another department. Definitely, but, uh, yeah. gentlemen, thanks for your thoughts on what makes for an iconic golf hole. We'll be back with more of Inside Golf in just a moment. Located in Bluebell, just a short drive from Plymouth Meeting, Bluestone Country Club offers a setting that's close at hand but feels like a world away. Bluestone offers a championship caliber golf course, practice facilities including a large driving range, separate chipping and putting areas, and a staff of PGA professionals. At the Country House at Bluestone, you'll find excellent food, superb service, and an outstanding setting. Their expert staff will assist in planning your next event, whether it's a wedding or simply a lunch and dinner or cocktail party. Check out Bluestone's variety of membership options. Much more than a golf course, Bluestone is a community.
Greater Philadelphia, where golf is more than a game. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf. Hope you enjoyed our look back at the recent 2018 BMW Philadelphia Amateur Championship. And another congratulations to Jeremy Wall, the winner of the 118th edition of the Philly Am. Also, our thanks to Lila Mackey and the local section of the PGA of America for what the local section's doing in concert with PGA Hope. And coming up next week, we'll be here at Concord Country Club in Westchester, Pennsylvania. This was a William Flynn design that dates back to the mid-20s. We'll check out and see how they're doing next week here at Concord Country Club. I'm Harry Donahue. Remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up. See you next week from beautiful Concord Country Club right here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at montcogolf.com. Buy the first tee of Philadelphia. The first tee helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit thefirstteephiladelphia.org. By the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life. And by Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. By the Haverford Trust Company, quality is in our DNA. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professionals.